they peeped and saw my destiny. My destiny. All I was meant to be, and all God. Help me look for three people and tell them with fire in your voice, like you believe what you're saying. He is risen. Hallelujah. I'm going to take for a subject very simply the cross. Hallelujah. And I'm going to ask you to pray that the mission of the cross will be established in your financial destiny. Yes. Amen. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Declare with me in the name of Jesus. Father in this service, Father in this service, I am demanding, I am demanding, and I am requesting, and I am requesting that the mission of the cross, that the mission of the cross, your heart's desire, your heart's desire concerning the cross, concerning the cross, will be expressly fulfilled, will be expressly fulfilled in my business, in my business, my profession, my profession, my vocation, my vocation, every aspect, every aspect of my life, of my life, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, lift up your voice and pray like you mean business, pray like that Lord in the name of Jesus that the mission of the cross will be expressly fulfilled in my business in my vocation in my finances in the name of Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you Lord for hearing our prayers this morning. I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice in this auditorium, those who are joining us via various media, will experience the power of the cross. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. And everybody said a roaring amen. amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord and turn quickly with me to Galatians chapter 3. And verse 13, we're going to read through verse 14. Galatians chapter 3. If you will, please, let me start from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 16. And then we'll come back to Galatians chapter 3. Ephesians 2 verse 16. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. By the cross. Say with me, by the cross. So the cross was a weapon that God used to achieve certain things for humanity. Hallelujah. Now Galatians chapter 3 from verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree. That tree there is the cross. Amen? The word, the phrase, or the, the word tree there refers to the cross. Now verse 14 tells us the mission of the cross. It says, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, which will be you and I, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So the ultimate end, the ultimate purpose of the cross was so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. The coming of the Holy Ghost was God's ultimate purpose for the cross. So that God the Holy Ghost can leave heaven, <clears throat> come into the earth, and not only that, be able to enter into the heart of man and begin to live within man. So now you are God's house address. You are now the temple of the Holy Ghost. God lives within you now. When Adam was in the Garden of Eden, Satan came and tempted 
Adam, and Adam and Eve fell. When Satan came, the Bible says God used to come in the cool of the day. But Satan met Adam and Eve. But nowadays the story is different. When the devil comes, he doesn't meet God absent. He meets God on your inside. Are you listening, somebody? That's the purpose for the cross. We are at an advantage. We're in a more vantage position than Adam was when he was in the Garden of Eden. He is with us all the time. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God lives within us now. Now, let's look at that word cross. The word cross has several meanings. If you take the noun of it, you take the verb of it, you take the adjective of it, you see different dimensions of that word cross. So what is a cross? A cross, by definition, is a structure consisting of a vertical and horizontal beam used to execute, used to execute people or criminals in ancient times. That's what a cross is. It's a noun. That's what it means in ancient times. Now, nowadays, when you look back, a cross is used to represent Christianity. That's the emblem of Christianity. If you want to know if there is a church in an environment, you'll be looking out for a cross, isn't it? Even Jesus, before he went to the cross, said to his disciples, if anyone will follow me, let him pick up his word, cross, and let him follow me. In that respect, the cross represents taking responsibility. The cross represents sacrifice. The cross represents the pain that leads to gain. They say that if you wear your cross today, you are going to, if you take up your cross today and you hang on your cross today, you are going to wear your crown tomorrow. So it's a, it's a price you pay today for the benefit you want to enjoy tomorrow. So your cross is your investment today for the blessing or the benefit, the reward of the investment you experience tomorrow. Your cross is your tithe you are paying today for the harvest from heaven that you are anticipating tomorrow. Your cross is the money you are setting aside for savings and investment because of the return on investment you are expecting in the future. It's your cross. It's a price you pay today to enjoy the prize tomorrow. The price you pay today, P-R-I-C-E, to enjoy, enjoy the prize, P-R-I-Z-E, tomorrow. Now, everyone that is going to amount to much in life must adopt the doctrine of the cross. You must learn the discipline of delayed gratification. The ability to put some things on hold today so that you can have a better future. That's the concept of the cross. That's the metaphor of the cross. You must be willing to forfeit certain things today so that you can enjoy the accolades tomorrow. There are things you want to wear today. You deny yourself of wearing them and make proper use of those resources today so that tomorrow you can be dressed like royalty. There are things you can drive today, but you take the resources and you put them into some meaningful and useful investment so that tomorrow you can drive 10 times of those things with ease. It's the cross. It's the kind of life that Jesus lived. It's the life that he recommends for us to live. The cross denies the demands of today's appetites. The demands for today's gratifications so that tomorrow you can reap the benefits that will be tenfold, a hundredfold, a thousandfold what you would have enjoyed today temporarily. Any person, any group of persons that does not operate by the principle of the cross is going to have a very, very, very disappointing end. The cross always precedes the crown. 
Tell the person by your side, the cross always precedes the crown. I'm not hearing you, Hilltop. Say the cross in my mother's always room, precedes the crown. The victim's Many tribulations and trials tried to weigh me down. But I had a word. Now, what is the cross? Furthermore, now we are going to enter the verb. The cross means to move, to move to the other side, to move from one side of the stage to the other. I can cross the stage. I'm here. And I want to cross the stage. And I go across the stage. That means, to cross means to move from one end to the other. So when God instituted the strategy of the cross, there's something he had in mind. They said the cross is to draw a line. Across another line, or to draw a line to divide or distinguish between two different zones or territories. It's a cross. Hallelujah. To transport across something. In fact, in certain cases, to oppose openly. You are crosswise with someone's opinion. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 48 and let's see the cross playing out in the Old Testament. The cross playing out in the Old Testament. Genesis chapter 48. This was the account of Jacob and his son Joseph when they reunited and Jacob was about to die. Joseph took his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, to Jacob. The Bible says in verse 1, And it came to pass after these things that one of Joseph, one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him, his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee, and Israel strengthened himself and sat up upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. Hallelujah. The man knew he was blessed. And said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and will make of the a multitude of people and we give these lands to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession and now thy two sons Ephraim and Manasseh which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt before I came unto thee into Egypt are mine in other words I will treat them like I'm treating my own direct children he's talking about his grandchildren now he says he will treat them as Reuben and Simeon they shall be mine. And thy issue, which thou begettest after them, shall be thine. And shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. In other words, these two, I have taken them and structured them into the direct covenant that God made with me. That was what Jacob was saying. This is phenomenal. And then in verse number 7, as for me, when I came to Padan, from Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan in the way, when yet there was but a little way to come unto Ephrath. And I buried her there in the way of Ephrath. The same is Bethlehem. And Israel, behold, Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? He already described the two sons. Now he's saying, who are these? So he was speaking in the spirit earlier on. And verse number nine, and Joseph said unto his father, they are my sons whom God had given me in this place. And he said, bring them. I pray thee unto me and I will bless them. I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim of, for age so that he could not see. So the man was not talk, talking by the senses. 
He didn't even recognize their presence by the senses because he didn't see them physically. He brought them near unto him and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face. And lo, God had shown me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand towards Israel's left hand and Manasseh in his left hand towards Israel's right hand and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head. Guiding his hand wittingly. For Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph. And said. God before whom my father Abraham and Isaac did walk. The God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil. Bless the lads. And let my name be named on them. And the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Israel, when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. But he also shall become a people and he also shall be great but truly his younger brother shall be greater than he and his seed shall become a multitude of nations and he blessed them that day saying in thee shall Israel bless saying God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh and he set Ephraim before Manasseh he said, no, Joseph, I have crossed my hand on purpose. Ephraim may have come second. He may have been in the back. He may not deserve this. He didn't qualify for it. He is not next in line, but I have crossed my hand and I have shifted him to a new position. I'm taking him from the back to the front. I'm taking him from poor to rich. I'm taking him from last to the front. I'm taking him from low to high. I'm taking him from poor to prosperous. I'm taking him from weak to strong. I'm taking him from relegated to accepted. I am changing his position. And how did he do it? The cross. The cross. Your business is moving forward. Your finances will move forward. Because of the cross. That's the mission of the cross. The mission of the cross is to pour forth upon you that which ordinarily you do not deserve. Because Jesus paid the price. I will give him what he doesn't deserve. God will put you in position, that position that you didn't earn. You didn't qualify for it. You weren't next in line to receive it. But because of what Jesus did, because of the cross, you are moved into it. Say, I accept it. Come on, say it. Say, I accept it. Not the person by your side. Say he's talking to you. You didn't have the seniority. But God has looked upon you like Ephraim. And he has crossed his hand. 
This is the essence of the cross. The cross is not just a vertical beam and a horizontal beam. The cross is a metaphor. It captures a spiritual reality. God has crossed his hand over your matter. I will move them to the front from the back. You didn't qualify for it, but God has crossed his hand. Nudge the person by your side say he has crossed his hand. You were being looked down upon, but now God is moving you to a place where you'll be looked up to. You were disrespected. God is bringing you to a place of honor, a place of influence, a, pay, a place of credibility, a, a place of acceptability, a place where you are welcomed, you, you are embraced. God is crossing his hand so that what would have taken you years to accomplish what would have taken you ages to accomplish? It will happen this year. Manasseh was on the left hand. Manasseh was on the left hand while of his own father, while Ephraim or rather, Manasseh was on the, Ephraim was on the right, on the left hand, and Manasseh was on the right hand because he was older. And Joseph was facing Jacob. Joseph planned it in such a way that the right hand of Jacob will rest upon the one who was on his left hand, which is the senior one. He knew what he was doing. But there was a spiritual wavelength that Jacob was operating in. Blind but seen. This was not a physical manifestation. This was a spiritual operation. And then as his hands were coming down, the Bible says he guided his hands wittingly. He was informed by spiritual revelation. And he crossed his hand. At that moment, he was transmitting to humanity a spiritual principle that has been concluded from before the foundations of the world. The Bible says, for Jesus is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And he was slain on the cross. So Jacob was tapping into that realm as he crossed his hand. That was the hand of God being crossed. When Jesus hung on that cross, God was crossing his hand. It's not just a play of words, it's spiritual revelation. Are you listening, somebody? What you do not qualify for, it is time for you to begin to enjoy it. Because of the finished work of the cross. Can I hear a living amen? Many tribulations and trials tried to weigh me down But I heard a word, a rainbow word that I will The cross of God's hands means that God has favored you God has made you the preferred one God has made you the Ephraim. You used to be a Gentile, but now you are spiritual Israel. The second has become the first. All through the scriptures, there's something about the second born. God was trying to transmit something across to us. By the cross, God has given you the preferred place. Ephraim was at a disadvantaged position, but God moved him to the right place. I came to tell you today that God has crossed his hand to move you to the right place. Where you will enjoy the right things. The right opportunities, the right blessings, the right flow of divine anointing. By the cross, God has crossed his hand and he has moved you from darkness into light. From poverty to prosperity, from sadness to joy, from the back to the front. Can somebody say amen?
order for this message, please request for the message number above. You can also request for other messages by Reverend Chris Oare when you call 084-779-290-0803-182-6714-0803-182-6712 or 0803-182-6702. For more details about Reverend Chris Oare, the Hilltop International Christian Center and other products and programs, please visit our website www.hilltopinternational.org